Today we're talking about depth of field and what you should be focusing on in your images. If you're trying to learn more about photography, this video will be perfect for you. Hey there, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Chris. I'm teaching you photography and how to start a creative business. I'm posting videos three times a week, so subscribe to stay notified. In this video, I'm teaching you more about depth of field and how you should be focusing in your images. You may have noticed that not everything in your photos is going to be sharp. Because of the optics of a lens, objects will look sharper depending on how far away they are from the lens and what you're focusing on. In my exposure triangle video, we talked about aperture and how it affects focus. Today, we're going to build on that. When you're trying to focus in photography, what you're doing is moving the plane of focus for forward and back relative to your camera sensor. Plane of focus is the plane where your camera is focusing on. This plane is always going to be parallel to your camera sensor. Everything that lays in this plane will be in focus. When you're taking a photo, you're taking our three-dimensional world and putting it in a two-dimensional medium. A photo has two dimensions, but depth of field can make photos seem three-dimensional. This is especially true when you're shooting on a low aperture, like 2.8. That has a shallow depth of field. Remember, a shallow depth of field means a blurry background. This is what we're focusing on today. How should you approach focusing when shooting on a low aperture? If your subject is close to you, the background's going to appear out of focus. This is great for portraits, it's great for product photography, and it's great if you're trying to make your subject stand out. But you need to know what your subject is. This may sound easy, but in the real world, there are situations where you could have two subjects that are both important. It all comes down to the story you want to tell in your photography. I have the perfect example, so let's get into it. These next two shots are of the same model in almost the exact same position wearing Nikes. I haven't done any Photoshop here, so please ignore the dust on her pants. So, the goal of this shoot is to promote the brand. I took these photos with the intention of showing off the sneaker she's wearing. Obviously, the shoes are closer to the camera sensor than the model's face. What does that mean? Well, we know the focus can't be both on her face and on the shoes at the same time if we want to use shallow depth of field. Now, we can use a wider depth of field and have both her face and shoes be in focus, but today we're talking about shallow depth of field and how to use this to your advantage. So the obvious question that comes up, where do we focus? Do we want to focus on the model's face or do we want to focus on the shoes? Let's remember what the goal of the photo is. It's to show off the shoes to promote the brand. With that in mind, I'm going to focus on the shoes. I'm going to use a flexible focus point in my camera to apply this focus to the shoes. I'm shooting this at f2.8, so that means it's a shallow depth of field. With the focus on her shoes, her face is going to be out of focus. I think this accomplishes the goal of the shoot really well. I'm promoting the brand in this shot while still having the model be a part of it. Now let's see what would happen if we went the other route. Let's focus on her face instead of the shoes. Right away, we see the shoes look out of focus. They just don't look that good. If I was shooting this for Nike, I don't think Nike would be happy with the results. This isn't promoting the brand in a great way. However, if this was a photo shoot for the Miles portfolio, I think this would be an awesome photo. I'm focusing on her face, and that's what you want when you're photographing models to promote them. She is the main attraction in this case, not the shoes. I'm sure you can start to see how focusing on different areas of a photo will tell a completely different story. All I did was move the focus square a little bit, and the message of the photo changed a lot. This is a powerful tool. It's not going to be easy to decide where to focus a lot of the time. You're going to be thinking of getting your exposure right, setting your shutter speed so the model isn't blurry, posing the model, looking at the scene to make sure the light's right, and then on top of that, trying to focus? That's hard, but with practice, it'll get easier. Eventually, this will become something that's intuitive while you're taking photos, but you need to practice. I know I preach a lot about shooting with intention, but this applies so much to this lesson. Knowing what the goal of the photo is before you take it is going to help you so much in focusing on the right areas. Shell depth of field is a powerful tool, and knowing how to use it to tell the right story will transform your photos. Next time you're out there photographing, try using a shallow depth of field and applying focus to different areas of your image. See how different the photos look from one another, decide what story you want to tell, and use the appropriate focus. I think it's great that you're trying to learn more about photography and creative business. If you can take a second to please like the video and subscribe to the channel, that'd mean a lot to me. I want to say a special thank you to all my new subscribers. Welcome. I'll see you all in the next video.